Okay, we're on the complex numbers topic, and we're looking at the moment at the, the fundamental theorem of algebra, which says that for any polynomial equation, like this one here, if the highest power is z to the power of 4 as a quartic equation, then we, we can be guaranteed that there are four possible solutions, real solutions or complex, but we will find all four of them regardless. We also looked in example 15, the previous one, that if we know that one complex number is a solution, then its conjugate is guaranteed to be a solution. And therefore, we know that there are always pairs of complex solutions. Now, that means that for this example here, where we've got the z to the power 4 aquatic equation, and we already know that there's one complex solution, that there's at least two complex solutions. And it might be that the other two are real, and that's fine. The other scenario then is that there are four complex solutions and no real solutions. Remember that the number of complex solutions must be an even number because they are paired up with a complex number and it's conjugate. So there are only two scenarios here. There are either two or four complex solutions, and we can go ahead and find that. The first thing is it says prove that this complex number is a root of the equation. There are two possible uh, ways of doing so. One is that you could substitute the solution in um, to the form of the equation. And show that the solution is zero. Uh, but the amount of multiplying out of these brackets is such that it just becomes uh, almost unmanageable. It can be done, but there is a better way to do it. And just like in example 15, which if you haven't looked at, I would suggest you do, the first thing we can do is to do a little bit of synthetic division. And we can do it with a complex solution. We're told that solution 1 plus, that 1 plus root 6i is a solution, which means that we should end up, if we put the coefficients in, we should end up with 0 at the end. That's still the plan. So let's do it. Uh, let's see what we need to do. We drop that 1 down to here. We multiply that 1 by 1 plus root 6i. And we get 1 plus root 6i. Now when we add these two numbers together up above each other, remember that negative 2 is real. And so we're going to add it to the real part of that complex number. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And so we end up with the number negative 1 plus root 6i. Now we multiply that by 1 plus root 6i. And this is where our first calculation comes in. We need to do a little bit. Uh, I'll do it at the side here. So we're looking at 1 plus root 6i multiplied by negative 1 plus root 6i. And if we multiply that out, we've got negative 1 plus root 6i minus root 6i. And then we've got root 6i multiplied by root 6i. Root 6 times root 6 is 6. And we've got i squared, so plus 6i squared. The two root 6i's cancel out in the middle. And that would give us negative 1. And this plus 6i squared becomes negative 6. Because i squared is negative 1. That gives us the number negative 7. I'm going to put negative 7 as my answer here. And then go ahead and add 8 and negative 7 gives me 1. If I multiply that 1 by 1 plus root 6i, I get 1 plus root 6i. And again, I'm going to subtract 2 from uh, 1 plus root 6i. Add them together, I get negative 1 plus root 6i. I've got another calculation to do. Negative 1 plus root 6i multiplied by 1 plus root 6i, which we happen to do already. It's, uh, it's unusual. Um, but in this example, uh, that works quite well here. We multiply it, and we know the answer is negative 7. And sure enough, if we put negative 7 here and add the two numbers together, we get 0 as our remainder. So we can state 
as we did before. As a remainder equals zero, that one plus root six i is a solution or a root. Now, interestingly, if z equals one plus root six i is a solution, what would its factor be? Because in the previous example, z equals two was the solution, so the factor is z minus 2. And so in this case here, the factor becomes z minus 1 minus root 6i. And the unusual thing about this is the factor has effectively three terms that we're used to having two terms, the letter and the number term. Okay? So that's how we first of all prove that a complex number is a solution. We can use synthetic division in order to prove that the remainder is zero. It then says, find the other roots. Okay. Well, there's one root that comes along uh, free of charge. Uh, and so we'll just put other roots as a wee heading, other roots. And the one that comes along free of charge is this. If z equals one plus root six i, is a root, then z equals 1 minus root 6 i is also a root, and we can explain that that's the complex conjugate. So we can make that statement very clear, explain why uh, you write it down. Don't just kind of say, here's another root, try and communicate well. So now we've got two complex roots. As I said, they always come in pairs. And further to that, if we've got two roots, we can have two factors. We already know that z minus 1 minus root 6i is a factor, which means that we, we can create a second factor. So known factors um, so far are z minus 1 minus root 6i, and the second factor that we've got is z minus 1 plus root 6i. That's from the complex conjugate. Now, if we have two small factors of a number, if we multiply those factors together, it will give me a bigger factor, a super factor. It will give me a larger factor of the original, and that will give me a little bit of insight into how to find the remaining factors. So I'd need to actually multiply out this uh, pair of brackets, which takes a little bit of time and care. Z times Z is Z squared minus Z plus root 6i Z. Multiplying through by negative 1 minus Z plus 1 minus root 6i multiplying through by negative 6i, negative root 6i, sorry, okay, so hopefully you can see where all these are coming from, and although it looks complicated, what you'll find is that there are matching equal and opposite pairs, so we've got plus root 6iz and minus root 6iz, We've got negative root 6i and positive root 6i. And lo and behold, the terms that are left are just, uh, are, there's no imaginary terms left because this one at the end, minus 6i squared, i squared is negative 1, so that value becomes plus 6. So we end up with z squared. We've got minus z and minus z, which is negative 2z, and we've got plus 1 and we've got plus 6, which is plus 7. And you should always, every time, end up with a quadratic expression in Z. Now that's our big factor, or made a combined from the two smaller factors, which means that in order to find the remaining factor, all we need to do is to divide Z squared minus 2Z plus 7 into our original 
a quartic equation. Okay, so what we need to do is to find the remaining factor we're going to have to do a bit of algebraic long division. Did I say this was going to be easy? Not sure I did. z squared minus 2z plus 7. So that's one factor. We're dividing into the original uh, expression 1, negative 2, 8, negative 2. 1, negative 2, Two Z plus seven. Okay. Double check that. Okay. Uh, we do a little bit of algebraic long division, so we do it as hopefully you've learnt it in the past. Z to the four divided by Z squared gives you Z squared. So we've got a Z squared term up here. We can then multiply through by Z squared this whole expression, which gives me z to the 4 minus 2 z cubed plus 7 z squared. And if we subtract that from the term up above, we get z to the 4 minus z to the 4 is 0, negative z cubed minus negative z cubed is 0. And we've got 8z squared minus 7z squared just gives me 1z squared. And then I can pull down the other term, minus 2z plus 7. As you can see, uh, we can then divide through z squared by z squared, which is just the number 1. Multiply 1 by our divisor there, and we get z squared minus 2z plus 7, which happens to be, of course, the same value up above which gives us a zero underneath which is our remainder which tells me that z squared plus one is the other factor. So we can say if we can follow this here that the original z to the four minus two z cubed plus eight z squared minus two z plus seven equals zero our original equation can be factorized into two quadratic equations. One we created from our two complex roots, and one we've just discovered from our algebraic long division. That is where our solution is so far. We already know the solutions to those because they were the ones that we worked with at the top. However, the unknown one at the moment is the z squared plus 1 equals 0. And we need to pursue the solutions to that. We may have to use the quadratic formula. But in actual fact, in this case, it's a wee bit easier because we don't have a z term. We can subtract 1 from both sides. And if you notice, z squared equals negative 1, which is actually the definition of our complex number situation where if z is the square root of negative 1, z is actually equal to plus or minus i. So occasionally we can solve for complex roots without using the complex, uh, without using the quadratic equation if you've got a squared z term and just a number. Okay, So we know the two complex roots from here and we know now the two complex roots from the other equation so we can write down with great excitement our solutions okay so the first two that we found way back seems like a long time ago one plus root six i one plus or minus root six i are our first two complex roots and what z equals we'll put z equals 1 plus or minus root 6i and also z is equal to plus or minus i. We have four solutions to a quartic equation. The fundamental theorem of algebra wins again.